Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History with me, Amanda Halley. And this month's episode of What We're Into, the Ultimate Fashion History's little monthly magazine, if you will, of everything that's delighting, inspiring, intriguing us in any given month. And of course, this month, it's May, and May is always one of my favorite months because it's my birthday month, and thank you all of you who sent birthday greetings to me. They were so appreciated and enjoyed, and also May, I always think, is the official start of summer. And now that lockdown has been lifted a little bit here and there, maybe some of us can actually get out and enjoy the summer. Well, the first thing that I'm into is not having a piece of steak stuck in my esophagus. This happened to me last week, which is why this episode is dropping a little bit late. I had a bit of steak stuck in my esophagus about there. It was actually quite a drama. There was talk of me going into hospital and having it surgically removed. I was having none of that. What I did, I drank a ton of Coca-Cola. It was very painful. I drank Coke over about two days and finally it flushed it out. So that is my top medical tip to you all. If you get anything stuck in your esophagus, even though it's painful to take big gulps of Coke, do it. It'll finally go down and you can eat, drink and live again. Let's look at some fashion. This month I discovered a new label. It's from Brazil and it's called Farm Rio. Check this out. Look at this explosion of color and wild tropical prints on these fabulous retro jet set maxi dresses. I'm in love with Farm Rio. It's from Brazil, as I just mentioned, but they do retail in the United States at a very reasonable price point. What else are we into? Well, sticking with fashion, I was into how much pink we saw in this year's collection for men. I love pink coral salmon on men, and we saw so much of it on the runways. This is all quite extreme in terms of the actual garments, but filter this down to real life retail, and I think that my boys might be thinking pink this summer. What else are we into? Do you remember last month when I told you about Radio OOO, the app that takes you through an international trip through time and music where you can click on a country and then a decade and hear songs from that country in that decade? Well, my very good old friend Pierre alerted me to this app. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Radio Garden. And as you can see, it goes around the globe and each of those green dots represents a radio station. Zoom in on the little green dot that you want to hear and you get the radio station in real time. Music, news, talk radio. It's like taking a vacation with your ears. Want to go to Kauai and listen to traditional music in real time with some news from Hanalei? You can do it with Radio Garden. What else are we into? What have we here? I am guessing that a lot of you already knew about this. I didn't until this month when I learned that in the 1960s, Zambia had its own space program. It was the brainchild of a Zambian science teacher, and it really was a thing. Look at these headlines. Zambia warns Russia, US will beat you to the moon. Zambia was dreaming big, but they would dream even bigger. Take a look at this. We're going to Mars with a space girl, two cats, and a missionary. At the time, evidently, this story really captured the imagination. Dream big. This is what I always say to my students. In 2012, Spanish photographer Cristina de Midle brought out a book of photographs where she reimagined the space program from Zambia. And here's just one of the stills. They're absolutely beautiful photographs. And in 2014, a short documentary movie, which is sort of a uh, part fiction, part documentary came out called The Afronauts, which tells the story of Zambia's space program. I absolutely love it. There's lots on the internet about it. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a link to everything that I'm discussing in this month's episode. What else are we into? Well, sticking with space, 
NASA have just discovered a new galaxy that they are calling the Wolf Disk. Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. That's my maiden name, so of course I like the Wolf Disk. It's absolutely beautiful as well, isn't it? It might just be my favourite galaxy, not counting our own, of course. What else are we into? Well, with no Met Gala this year, I was really into the Met Gala Challenge, where the Met Gala, not known for its sense of humour, invited people to recreate their favourite Met Gala red carpet outfits at home, and the results were brilliant. Here's the original. Here is the do-it-yourself lockdown at home version. I love this one. Take a look at that. And I think this might be my second favorite. We all know this iconic red carpet look. How fantastic is that? But of course, my favorite was this one. I think Louis and Bo, my cats, should count themselves very lucky that I did not enter them in the Met Gala challenge. What else are we into? Oh, I loved this. Wallpaper Magazine invited fashion designers from around the globe to draw by hand what they saw when they look up from their work desk while on lockdown. And here are just some of the results. This is Maria Grazia Chieri for Dior. Marco de Vincenzo, obviously looking out over the rooftops of Rome. Pierre Hardy. Giuseppe Moretta for Pringle. There were lots others. These are so delightful and inspiring. I'll leave a link so you can look at the rest of them. What else are we into? Well, what with coronavirus, COVID, lockdown, all of that, I have started rereading The Decameron by Boccaccio from the mid 1300s. Basically, if you don't know about it, which I'm sure you do, he tells the tale of a group of strangers who are basically on lockdown in an Italian villa to avoid plague. I first read it a lifetime ago as an undergrad in my medieval literature class and hadn't read it since, but my friend Robert reminded me of the parallels between the Decameron and what's going on today, so I started dipping into it again, and it really is interesting and such a delight. There was a movie of the Decameron made in the early 70s. I didn't know that until I started putting this episode of What We're Into together. I was going to watch it and then I learned it was by Pasolini and I once made the mistake of watching Salo. You know that movie, Salo? Or The 120 Days of Sodom? That's a mistake you only make once. It really put me off Pasolini. But the costumes look great, don't they? What else are we into? Well, after three months without them, many restaurants are now allowed to reopen, but with limited capacity, sometimes 40% capacity, which doesn't really add to atmosphere, does it? All these empty tables, which is why I was so into what the Inn at Little Washington, Virginia has done. This Michelin star winning restaurant has put mannequins in period costume at the alternating tables to add a sense of gaiety to the proceedings. I think this is such a cool idea. Look at the costumes. This is so much fun. I think every restaurant should do this. What else are we into? Well, sticking with quarantine, I was really into the elementary school teacher who missed her students so much that she knitted tiny little effigies of all of her pupils. How cute is that? Oh, I've discovered a new website. It's called Dribble, and basically it's for artists and graphic designers. And you can go through this website and click on an artist and look at their work. It is so inspiring. I'll leave a link to it. You'll love it. What's up next? I've just discovered this store based in Toronto, but I believe they ship internationally called the Cocktail Emporium. And they have the most beautiful glassware I have ever seen. But get this, it's so reasonably priced. You know how expensive fancy glassware usually is. Not at the Cocktail Emporium. Look at these gorgeous glasses. They have a nice little tiki section. You know I like that. 
beautiful shakers, fabulous stirrers and cocktail sticks. They also have recipes, tons of cocktail recipes, so inspiring. And the photography on the site is beautiful. You will love this website. It does encourage you to buy things you don't need, like an absinthe dispenser. I managed to resist this, but I did do a little bit of shopping at the Cocktail Emporium. There's no reason for glasses to be as expensive as they sometimes are. So three cheers for them. What else are we into? Well, sticking with things I like, I am in love with this lamp. It's called the Siren Lamp and it's wall mounted and it was designed by David from DSK Designs. It is fantastic. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the Siren Mermaid here. I think it's absolutely extraordinary. I want it very, very much. I think everything that David does is on demand. So I will leave a link and if you want his lamp, maybe he will make it for you. What a talented guy. What's up next? Well, as you may remember, the high point of my televisual year is the new season of Endeavor. And season seven has dropped. It's been available to me for about three weeks. But guess what? I actually managed to save it until my birthday. And Rupert and I spent my birthday drinking champagne and watching Endeavor. The new season is fantastic. And as always, the costumes are great. This season picks up in 1970 and there wasn't a stitch that was wrong. Don't you love that dress? I want that dress. Everything was perfect. I love this show so much. If you've never seen Endeavour, promise me you'll go back to season one and watch the whole thing. Once you start, you can't stop, especially if you like a good murder mystery. This is quality viewing. What else have I been watching? Not quality viewing. Pearl and Dean commercials. Anyone in England watching this of a certain age will know exactly what Pearl and Dean is. When I was a kid, when you would go to the movies, the commercials were put on by a company called Pearl and Dean. So before the advert started, you would get the Pearl and Dean music and logo. And we found some playlists that have nothing but vintage Pearl and Dean commercials. They are so corny, so cheesy, all English, of course, but there are some great historic fashion looks to be found. What else are we into? I'm really into listening to Musica Leggera. This is Italian pop music from the 50s and 60s. People like Rita Pavone and Patti Bravo. It is such great stuff. So evocative, so atmospheric. I'll leave a Spotify playlist in the description. You listen to this, pour yourself Campari and Basically, you have transported yourself to Retro Capri. Tell you what else I was really into this month. I was really into the fact that the incomparable Dame Judi Dench made the cover of Vogue, the oldest lady ever to be on the cover of any Vogue. She is 85 years old. What an incredible face. I love that finally fashion is starting to celebrate the older lady. What else are we into? Back to television. I finally watched Mrs. America. I know it's been out for about a month, but I only just got around to watching it a couple of days ago. I absolutely loved it. And Dana Dalegur's costumes are sensational. The action starts in 1970, I think, and ends in 1979. And she did not miss a stitch as she took us through fashion of the 1970s. It's a really excellent show with wonderful performances. It stars Kate Blanchett and you know you're in good hands, right? If Kate Blanchett is starring in something, what else are we into? Well, I am really into seeing this, the new movie about Al Capone, starring Tom Hardy. It's called Capone. It was supposed to drop in the movie houses, but because of lockdown, it dropped to stream on Apple and 
Google Play and all of that kind of thing. It tells the story of Al Capone's last days and I'm going to watch it this weekend because can I just shill for a second? Rupert and I have a vested interest in Al Capone because Rupert, he's my husband, his publishing company has republished the original Scarface novel by Armitage Trail, which of course is based on the life of Al Capone. I will leave a link to both the movie and our book in the description area. What else? Again, sticking with streaming TV, I am so excited. Next month, HBO are debuting their new version of Perry Mason. It's set in the 1930s, because of course that's when the original novels began. There aren't many stills out for me to show you, but it really looks excellent. Gritty LA in the early 1930s. How can you go wrong? What else are we into? Well, thanks to Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group member Sandy, I have discovered a new footwear company that I am obsessed with called BAIT, Bait, but another innocent tale. It's from Southern California, and what they do are vintage style shoes, all completely animal free, and they are lovely and so reasonably priced. I bought three pairs in their sale. The shoes are so beautifully made, I can absolutely recommend this company, especially to those of you who go for a vintage look. It's not always easy to find vintage style shoes to go with it, right? But Bait will help you out. Right, it's time for the food of the month. And this month, well, not steak. In fact, no solid foods. I've been put off after my drama. How about chilled summer soups. How fresh, how delicious, and you don't even have to make them by scratch. I'll tell you what I do. It's a bit of a cheat. I get those carton soups like these sort here, chill them in the fridge, pour them into a bowl, and then zhuzh them up with little bits on top or maybe a swirl of sour cream. It's so posh, it's so fancy, and yet so easy. The cocktail of the month I'm so excited. Finally, after many decades of trying, I have invented my own cocktail and it was born of a terrible mistake. Terrible mistake or wonderful serendipitous mistake. I was attempting to make a pisco sour. I got distracted and instead of using just egg whites, I used the whole egg. And as we didn't have any lime, I had to use lemon. So basically, I didn't end up with a pisco sour at all. I ended up with this thick, delicious, yellowy drink that we are calling the good neighbor after the good neighbor policy. Pisco sour has regular Angostura bitters on top. Rupert had the idea of putting chocolate bitters on top, like these ones, the Fee Brothers Aztec chocolate bitters, which we have, and they are delicious. It ended up tasting like a boozy egg cream. It was scrumptious. I will leave the recipe in the description area. And just in case you don't know, yes, there is an episode here on the ultimate fashion history on fashion and the good neighbor policy. Make a good neighbor and watch this episode if you haven't seen it yet. It's one of my better ones. And the designer of the month, someone whom I'm sure enjoys Musica Leggera, stylish, lovely Valentino. And let's just remind ourselves why we love Valentino. And you know what I'm going to do? Two for the price of one here, although not a designer, a style icon par excellence. Valentino was a May baby, and so was Audrey Hepburn. And there she is wearing Valentino. Well, I hope you enjoyed this rather late episode of what we're into here on The Ultimate Fashion History. I don't do comments here. So head over to Facebook and join our Facebook group. We have so much fun over there and it's such good company in these lockdown days. Hope you enjoy what's left of the month. I'll be back very soon with more episodes here on The Ultimate Fashion History. So until then, enjoy the sunshine. Thanks ever so much for watching and lots of love. Bye for now.